We're live. Okay. Rad. Dope. Hello. Have you oh wait, have you tweeted out yet? Uh no. I don't see it. I don't see a tweet. It's going to. Uh, oh no. I'm never sure whether I should okay. tweet it before or after I start the stream. Before. Before is usually best, <laughs> so it gives people time to come in. That's true, actually. I don't know. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that before streaming. Now I think about it. Water. <coughs> good, good. I'll, be, oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, oh, I know where I was going to post it. because now we've just got this dead air as I'm, like, <laughs> tweeting it out <laughs> and whatever else. Sorry. I'm Sorry. <laughs> My streams are not I got water. good. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go open up the stream too so I can read chat. Okay, so, as far as we both know, we don't know anything that's coming up. Okay, cool. So, this is all blind for the two of us. <laughs> Yeah. Which means I can guide you guys through the good endings and oh, bad yeah. endings. Oh yes. Wonderful. Yeah, I literally only know like who it is and nothing else. I uh, read through it the day it came out on Case's stream, which was very fun. Yeah, I want I want to watch that, <laughs> but again, spoilers. <laughs> sure. Wait, which of you is no, Carcat then? Uh, which um, we were both Carcat actually. We traded off every uh, every selection choice selection ah, right, character right. Sele every. Uh, you know, yeah. every time we went back and forth. Uh, so, so, so the question is, who is going to be MSPA reader this time around? Oh yeah. Because uh, I know that we're also doing we're also doing Kanaya as well, and if you want, I can try to voice Kanaya. Uh, yeah, if you want to try. <laughs> I don't think I could do a good voice. Emphasis on emphasis on try, but yeah. <laughs> the most any of us can do. Yeah, uh, so if you want to be heard, then in terms of, in terms of MSPA reader for the car cat route, then, uh, whoever wants to do that, like, right, it would be me or Karen if you want to do it, or if you want me to do it, I don't mind. Um, I could be MSPA reader for car cat, then you could be MSPA reader for Kanaya, how's that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Uh, just may as well get right into it, without further ado. Volume 5, Meet yep. 1. People like us. I'm excited for this. I don't know how they're even going to get to Alternia. Like, we last left off just... Uh, yeah, just we were st we were still on Earth, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess <clears throat> how they get that they can just go there, but why? 
Uh, yeah, that, w w like, what's the reasoning? But I guess we're gonna find out now. Yeah. So we'll start now. <laughs> Confident that your new friends are safely speak uh, sleeping off a rowdy night full of snacks, video games, and taxidermy, you turn your thoughts to dreams. Jade's dreams. That fascinating, shining place that feels familiar the way, well, the way a dream does. Prospect feels like the place you should be right now. You've got a brand new zap sense, and it hasn't failed you so far. It allows you to befriend several emotionally volatile teens in precarious home situations. These powers won't let you down. So, you zap to the dream world. Turns out you can fly here. Brad. You drift around a little bit, admiring the glittering towers, uh, waving lazily to all the various dream NPCs until you come up upon a dome with an open window. Inside, a troll boy with nubby horns and a silly outfit lies curled up in his dream bed, sleeping soundly. Oh, so we're not on- we're not- we're on, um, the troll's, uh, <clears throat> medium. Yeah. Interesting. Aw, you look so peaceful. Can you imagine this is a very peaceful troll boy? <laughs> Perhaps it should strike you as strange that you immediately know what this alien's race is, but nah, you don't have time for that. Abruptly, the boy va the boy vanishes. Oh, shit! You follow him without, without hesitation. Zap. Luckily, your powers seem oriented to specific people rather than places. You figure it's because this is a character-driven narrative. You find yourself in a dim respite block. There's a bookshelf and a desk of, and clothes hung up on pegs on the wall. But instead of a bed, there's a small tub of green goo. Hmm. What? The fuck? A gravelly voice tinged with... <laughs> <laughs> a gravelly voice tinged with mania crashes over you in a furious wave. You're reeled back from the onslaught. Now, I, I'm just gonna take a moment. Oh god, this I never switched to the game. Voice is, this description of his voice is very interesting to me for a few reasons. I feel like my voice is a little more easily described as gravelly than, than most other depictions of Carcat. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, also, it's very, it's very fitting. I'm glad you've got that from the, you've gotten that right from the very start. <laughs> Every evening. I never now, to the now, I screen, so. <laughs> something, something interesting I've discovered. Um, while while we're waiting for that to catch up, I guess. Um, it turns out that there are a couple of people who are working on Homestuck Squared or Homestuck Two, whatever you want to call it. Um, that actually follow the Box's channel. Yeah, I heard about that. That's so awesome. So yeah, that's exciting. Anyway, um, every evening I wake up to another glorious night of the universe applying its globes directly to my face in the most hilarious and juvenile way possible. I'm used to this, okay? I'm not saying this is anything new, but this is just next fucking level. Your eyes finally adjust enough to see the same troll boy from the dream world. He appears to have fallen asleep at his hust up. Uh, at his hust top, some crumbs are stuck to his face with <laughs> where it has had been pressed to the desk. He's got a zodiac symbol, symbol on his shirt. Whichever one is a sideways 69. I'm not really <laughs> oh, nice. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's got a zodiac symbol on his shirt. Whichever one is a sideways 69. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> and man, he is angry. Like, way angrier, angrier than a normal person. But less angry than usual, Carcat. Mm -hmm. I stay in this crumbling excuse of a hive, rig this place with early warning. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> early warning <laughs> systems. I'm a little. I gotta warm up. And what's my reward? A deformed blue blood teleporting in my respite block like a fucking. All right. He still got the. He still got the hoodie on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You zap out of there because, damn, you don't know what kind of early warning system he has, but whatever predators it's meant to keep away, all he'd have to do is shout at them. <laughs> you appear on a nearby hill about a hundred yards away from the hive. From the outside, it's large and leaning with square windows and, and, an, and an unnecessary number of balconies. Although, who are you to say what's necessary? Maybe this dude really likes balconies. He could probably use the fresh air. A couple of similarly large and lopsided hives scatter the skyline. Hmm. Hives. You aren't sure how you know they're called that, but it feels right. Maybe because of the organic insectal ar architecture, like they were grown instead of built. You clearly aren't on Earth anymore. The sky is black and the bushes are purple, and there are two moons. Neither, neither of them is your gold moon, though. 
You think maybe you should be freaked out by the strange alien land, but nah. You're a seasoned friend venturer by now. Besides, you like it here. It's comfortable. This is a pretty good hill. I, I like this music. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's always great. You sit for a while thinking about this hill and this universe and your place it and your place in it. That's a typo. Oh. Until the sun starts to crest over the distant horizon. Hey, idiot! The troll boy is leaning out of his front door. You're sitting on the ground waiting for sunrise, so you're either a jade blood or a moron. And I know the only jade blood who lives outside the caverns, and she's a lot better looking than you. So what the hell? Who are you? You're you're not a troll. There's a substantial gap of grassy hill between the two of you, but you can hear him just fine. <laughs> he has a talent for projection. You stand up and brush the dirt off your ass. He seems a bit less angry now. <clears throat> Alright, so zap right over is bad ending, take your sweet time is a good ending. I think do we want to do bad or good is the first Let's do bad question. Bad endings first, so you know. Yeah. High. So you I'll said zap, zap right over is a bad end, right? Yep. Alright, let's zap right over. No point in wasting daylight, or moonlight, whatever. So you just zap on over there. Oh, holy fuck! Oh shit! <laughs> a flash of gray and a gleam of metal. Bright, shocking pain opens up. The, opens up in the middle of you. The boy stares, out, eyes round, yellow and shocked. Their laugh comes out wet. Why are you laughing? You don't know what else. You don't know what else to do. You press a hand to the wound in your stomach, trying to hold the blood in, in with sheer willpower. You tell him you were just trying to save a little time. What? The boy stares down at the weapon in his hand. A viciously hooked blade that he pulled seemingly out of nowhere. A scythe? No, a sickle. Is this kid a communist? <laughs> Did communists actually use sickles or were they just sickle themed? There's so many communist facts that you don't know. <clears throat> the boy continues to stare at his sickle. Then he stares at your fingers. He looks back and forth. His sickle, your fingers. His sickle, your fingers. Or, more accurately, the blood on his sickle and your fingers. He's well, gaping yeah, at the course. crimson. He's gaping at the crimson splashes like he's never seen blood before. Oh shit! Right. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't. Come I just, I just, yeah, that didn't occur to me until now. Yeah. <laughs> his his mouth moves, but no sound comes out. He hunches over himself like he's the one who's been gutted. Do you remember when Homestuck was coming out and there was an update where Carquette was bleeding, but they didn't want to show what color blood he had? So. <laughs> yeah. So it was like it, it was like fucking flashing rainbow. Blood. rainbow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit was so funny. <laughs> God, I can only imagine the theories that came out of that. No, there were actually people who thought he canonically had rainbow blood for a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't sure what he does after that, because suddenly you're on your back and all you can see is the sky. <laughs> and now we see- and now here we see Karka having a crisis, we're finding another red blood. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I want to point out that his the blood coming off of his arm is like the the of blood symbol. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> That's clever. And back to the character right. choice. Yeah. So, or back to the choice. Gonna take oh wait, whoops! Hold on. Time. Hold on, I uh, picked the wrong thing. Uh, load. There we go. <clears throat> All right, let's take our sweet fucking time this time. Yeah. You walk leisurely down the hill. The, be the heat uh, from the rising sun washes over your back and you speed up. That sun is bad news, you just know it. You start down the hill. Light bleeds further across the horizon and your pace gets a little less leisurely. The troll boy crosses his arms. His shoulders are rounded in a slouch like he spends a lot of time making himself smaller. <laughs> his black painted claws are, are bitten down. You wave a little awkward hello. He rolls his eyes and grabs you by the arm grip surprisingly strong. He tugs you underneath the shadowed overhang of a balcony. Okay, asshole, what- Okay, asshole, what were you doing watching me in my dream like some cornless cast-posing pervert? I can't even retreat to unconsciousness anymore, is that it? I won't even slide into the nascent relief of death without an alien stalking me. Did one of my friends put you up to this? Was it Solix? Everyone's fa everybody's favorite pastime makes Carcat's life even more of a constant effervescent shit show. 
You tell him, Carcat, that it's not like that. You don't know anybody named Solace, and you didn't mean to be creepy. You just found him, liked how he looked, and decided to follow him home. <laughs> yeah, that makes it better. Yeah. Carcat's thick eyebrows creep, creep upward. Okay, you know how that sounds, but you really didn't do it to be weird. You did it for friendship. You crave it, like a mineral. Toblerone promise fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> wow, very normal, Mr. Magic. Oh, but you are magic. Uh, okay, maybe not you specifically, you don't want to brag. But you can do some pretty magic stuff. Carcat looks incredibly dubious, even more so than Rose had, which who you might de who you might have described as politely incredulous. You consider explaining to him all the wild stuff that Jay told you about, games and destiny and such things, but you really can't imagine what any of that has to do with this grumpy alien boy. What are the chances? You tell him you can prove it. You can bring him to visit one of his friends. You are so awesome at bringing friends together. You could vi you could visit Solux, was it? Carcat makes a noise like a tea kettle being punched. Hell no! That nutbiter would self-immolate if I interrupted his coding. You wonder if that's a euphemism. Maybe Carcat just likes scare quotes. I don't have time. To I don't have the energy to grub sit his freaky deformed bulges today. Oh my god. <laughs> No, but that was plural. Let's just bring yep. back some bad memories. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then where does he want to go? Does he have any more friends? <sighs> I wouldn't call him a friend, actually. More like an endless burden I've been cursed with by the slithering elder gods of the outer reaches. If I didn't occasionally check up on him, he'd space out so far and hit hard vacuum. So, do we do this? Not how, how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, you're actually not quite sure. But you don't want to backpedal and suggest to this cool, angry troll boy that you don't know what you're doing. Do I just... His hand kind of hovers near yours. Uh, hold on? You could hold hands, but you don't want to be too forward. You Rose can also just interact. hold him under the armpits. Rose, don't interact. <laughs> <laughs> you think holding me under the armpits is less weird than holding frond stumps? Uh, yeah. Sort of? Parkhead puts an awkward hand on your elbow. Then he frowns and pushes up your sleeve, laying three fingers against your bare arm. You good, dude? But, yeah, sorry. You're just... kind of warm? Thank you. You tell Karkat that he is very warm, too. Let's just get this over with. Try to aim for just outside his hive. His Lucis isn't around, and he's usually too stoned to even notice if the roof came down. But I don't want to startle him. Cool. Here goes. You zap somewhere pitch black and immediately blunder right into Karkat. Oh my god! Can you keep it together for a single fucking glance nugget? You aren't in Carcat's hive anymore. You appear to be in the void. Cool. Okay. The what? Let go of me. You tell Carcat that he is that he is actually the one still holding on to you. He makes an angry noise through his nostrils and releases you from his clammy grasp. He moves away from you and collides with what sounds like about seventeen mops all banging into each other and clanging, clattering to the ground. Oh no! God fucking! Something smashes. Slay! Guzzling! <laughs> a shower of little noises like marbles over hardwood. What even is that? Oh. What is... Where is this? <clears throat> a light finally pops on above you. You appear to be in an alien broom closet with, like, alien cleaning supplies, you guess? One of the bottles just has Clen written on it in permanent marker. In permanent Clen. marker. <laughs> You ask Karkat if he's if he meant to transport the two of you into a closet. A bucket rattles as he kicks it. He yelps and jumps backward on your foot. I I expected this. <laughs> what the fuck, Makara? You bottom feeding asshole! Your oh personal habits Christ. are almost as disgusting as your pan rotting purple words. Why is your paling equipment mixed in with your scrub poles? 
Did you figure nobody would notice? Surprise, look sucker! I noticed! What in the hell? <laughs> Christ almighty. Cargat breaks off, and after a moment, you realize why. Heavy footsteps shuffle closer. Someone has heard the absolute rumpus tantrum that Carcat's kicking up. Oh god. Oh, no. Jamie? Uh, oh god, <laughs> I'll try. I, I don't know if I've ever tried to do a gamzy if, if you don't have a gamzy, I can do no, one. No, no, no. I mean, I don't, but I'll try. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey. Hold up, my brother. I'm hearing something in the scrub cubby. Some squeak beats what's gone on it. What's all got itself trapped? The door opens a crack. Carcat grabs your arm again. Oh, fuck. A shadow looms on the wall. Wild hair and tall horns. Oh, fuck me. Carcat squeezes your, squeezes your arm so hard it hurts. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck! The door opens a little wider and you feel wetness on your arm where Carcat's claws have drawn blood. Yikes. The door, the, the door creaks and you panic. You both crash down to the floor together in Karkat's respite block. Karkat's little horns jabbed you in the side. What the fuck was that for? Why did you do that? Because Karkat was freaking the fuck out and you were worried the two of you were in danger? And there was some menacing asshole saying creepy stuff outside the closet door? That is a complete mischaracterization of the scenario and I'm totally disgusted he'd even bring it up. It's not a mischaracterization! He was totally losing it! Look, he was clinging on to you so hard he even drew blood! Oh, here we go again. Yep. You show him your clawed up arm. Karkat's reaction is immediate and overblown, which you are beginning to gather isn't out of character for him. He starts uh, vigorously examining himself. He appears to be checking for injuries. No, you insist he's not the one bleeding. You are. He's so covered up in jeans and sweater that you have no idea how he'd even get cut in the first place. Wait, is that your blood? Uh, yeah? What's the big deal? Besides the fact that he totally just scratched the shit out of you. You're willing to let it slide, though. For friendship reasons. You figured this might just be the way he greets people? It's, all, it's honestly kind of fucked up. Maybe you should just leave? Wait, what? Now you're just gonna zap the fuck out of here like nothing happened? You can't go out there! It isn't safe! N not for people like... Karkat pulls himself warily to his feet. He's still looking at you like you're a bomb that might go off if he steps wrong. Slowly, he extends his own palm and draws a claw across it. Crimson blood beads up and drips to the floor. It isn't safe for people like us. Clearly something is happening here, and it's probably a really deep and affecting moment, but you're just not sure what you're supposed to do. You bleed, he bleeds, both of you bleed. Sweet! Blood friends! You can fuck with that! <laughs> how, how did you get a Cerulean's hoodie? Did you bag yourself a high blood Moirail? God, there are, th this is going places and I love it. I like the parallels before with like when he met Jack, cutting his hand. Yeah! yeah that's, that's cool. Now that you have established that the two of you do indeed have- both have blood, Karkat appears to have warmed up to you a lot. He even offers you something called grub juice, which you're pretty sure is just coke. Except not as sweet. It's almost a little salty. You take tiny polite sips and then pour it into a dead plant as soon as Karkat turns his back. <laughs> you tell him that you aren't actually sure where you got the sweatshirt. You were just wearing it when you woke up? You don't even remember where that was. You just know you were standing in front of John's house, and you were wearing this hoodie, and you knew it was important, but not why it's important. Possibly because it keeps you from being naked. You didn't realize it belonged to a cerulean, whatever that is. Parkhead is looking at you like you aren't making much sense, which is fair, because you really aren't making much sense. So, you're a mutant blood alien with amnesia. That can also teleport. Yep. Oh, and you can time travel, too. Don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> Parkat sits down at his desk and hits the space bar on his keyboard. Uh, I ended up uh, opening a weird menu. Hold what? on. Take your time. 
Uh, I open up a font override and a voice men menu. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you do? That's a th that's a thing. It's an accessibility menu, apparently. Okay. Weird. Anyway. Um, well. <laughs> let me. Uh, okay. Put space space bar on the keyboard. We can probably figure out whose cast sign that is. Well, not as specifically, unless you've got some incredibly unlikely and well honed husk top skills. You've got no husk top skills, owned or otherwise. Yeah, I'm not fucking surprised. Here, just give me a second. Don't break any of my. Don't break any of my shit. You take a glance around the room, keeping your arms behind your back so as to make absolutely sure you don't break any of his shit. His room is surprisingly tidy for someone as scattered as Carcat, mostly just weapons and movie posters. It all has the air of someone who doesn't plan to live in a place for very long. It feels... temporary. Carcat is typing furiously with his mouth pulled into a little frown. That's his default, it appears. Every so often, though, he'll throw glances at the cuts in your arm. He... he really is hung up on your blood. Good news, Captor! Tonight is your lucky night! Finally, you get a chance to put your money where your dribbling snaggletooth flap is! I need you to do something for me. If Solox is coming up, I'm gonna try Solux my best. <laughs> <laughs> oh. KK, if this is more whining about the team leaders, I don't want to hear it. You just, uh, you just don't have the qualities necessary for that sort of scenario. And if you're just here to start to start some sort of, I'm not I'm not good at the list. I'm sorry. If and if you're just here to start some sort of uh, slap fight for whalers, then you should probably go fuck yourself. Because I've got actual work I need to do tonight. <laughs> oh my god! Who gives a fuck about a game Aradi had dug out of a hole in the ground? And what actual work? Like I even believe that for a second. You mean the actual work of touching yourself while sobbing into your Cooper Yes, hilarious, but we can, but can we skip a foreplay for just one time in our lives? All that's going to happen is uh if you feign something you regret and then cry typing over what whether or not it was still friends. Okay, first of all, fuck you. I don't have time for any of your pathetic burns dunking me into the cart into a carton of weak sauce. There's actual real serious shit going down. Well, now that we've wasted two myths telling each other how busy we are, what the fuck do you want? I need you to check something in the Imperial database for me. Cast records. And I want you to do it without asking me why I need it. Deal? Wait, what the fuck, KK? Absolutely no. Er, absolutely no deal. You didn't even try to make a deal. You just told- God, let me read that. Absolutely no deal. You didn't even try to make a deal. You just told me to do something incredibly legal and dangerous. Why do you need cath records? Do you think ancestors are bullshit? Or why do you need cath records? Do you think ancestors are bullshit? Ancestors are bullshit. Fake night dream nonsense for kids who hate themselves and want to experience a connection to something better than they are. Face the facts, bulldweeds. There is no way any of us are descended from anybody that matters. Then why the hell do you want me to risk getting cold for records if it's a bunch of bullshit that doesn't matter? I might have a death wish, but I'm not too vital. So either tell me what crawled up your nook and laid egg and laid eggs in there. It's missing a two in there. Yeah. <laughs> or oh. or let me get back to work. No, you just say it very expl So <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'm only telling you this because we're friends and I trust you. There's this person in my hive. Person. Yeah, they aren't a troll, but they aren't a drone either. I figure they're an alien, but they've got a cerulean sign, and they're trying, and we're trying to figure out where it came from. Wait, they aren't a troll, but they're a cerulean? <clears throat> Sorry, KK. I'm trying to write my pan around this, but I'm pretty sure you're fucking with me. Oh my god, could you just run this? Give me a second. Okay, nobody's had nobody's had the sign or cat name in a while. Ask your new alien friend if they know the name Adolov. Hey, do you know? Oh, what the fuck? Adolov, is that? Mullet. I don't it's, remember. It's, yeah, it's Mullet's surname. Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. Okay. <clears throat> we know him. 
Also, yes, we do, and I'm sad. <laughs> also, I want to point out that I know that my lisp is way too heavy for Solix, but I'm trying my best here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a hard voice. You step back from where you've been reading over Carcat's shoulder. You couldn't resist. He was just getting so heated and mad, banging on the keyboard and making weird little growly noises. Do you think you can just- Carcat goes absolutely silent. He's rigid. If he's been a cat, his hair would have, would be standing straight up. You ask him what's wrong, and he shushes you, and he shushes you so loudly you almost fall over from shock. You, sh <laughs> you strain, and in the distance you think you hear a strange staticky whirring. Oh shit. Yeah. Suddenly, Carcat explodes into motion, grabbing your arm and pulling you out of his respite block and down the stairs. In the living room, he tucks a thick black blanket from off the back of the couch and pulls up the rug in the center of the room. Beneath it is a trap door. What the hell is- Be quiet. His movements are quick and panicky, but also methodical. His jaw is set and his eyes are, are hard as he unbolts the trap door, gives it a hard yank to loosen, it, to loosen it, and props it open. Beneath it is a rectangular pit in the fountains of the house. Er, wait. Beneath it is a rectangular pit in the foundations of the house, the size and shape of a shallow grave. This isn't the first time he's done this. You doubt it's even the tenth. So far, Karkat has struck you as a little bit ridiculous, but now there's something fierce burning in him, something angry and distilled. The sound comes again, closer this time, and you see a hulking shadow out the window. Huge- Excuse me. Huge and menacing and armored. Oh, he's looking quite sufferer like there. Yep. Uh -oh. Karkad yanks you down into the pit with him and wraps the two of you in the blanket. Then he closes the trap door and you're plunged into a darkness so absolute it's like you've stopped existing. What the hell is going on? A drone. Karkat's face is squished against your shoulder. The fear in his voice shudders, shudders you to the bones, or er, to your bones. It, it's just a routine check. We, we should be fine down here. My, my, my loose has dug this. It hides the temperature. The temperature? Of me. Of us. Of our mutation. Oh, he's so scared. <clears throat> You don't understand, but that doesn't stop you from being afraid. Impossibly heavy footsteps land on the floor above you. Carcat trembles. God, you have to do something. And so, Wait It Out is the bad ending. Okay. Hmm. Y'all ready for feelings? Oh no, I'm not ready for feelings. I guess we're waiting it out then? <laughs> yeah, we're waiting it out. Okay. Oh, I, I just now noticed that there are people in the chat. Hello! Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't, didn't want to interrupt the moment, but... Hello, my <laughs> Alright, let's wait it out. Alright, let's wait it out. We'll be fine! We'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Carcat mutters it to himself again and again. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. This always works. There's no reason to. A rusty grating screech as a trapdoor is rest off the tin hinges. Light pours in. Two giant metal hands re reach into the hole and pluck the both of you out. Carcat wriggles and bites like a cat trying to get free. Oh, I'm gonna get upset, aren't I? You don't have the chance. The drone tosses you bodily out of the way. Your head hits the wall and everything goes a little strange and streaky after that. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. When you come back to yourself, you're outside in the blazing morning heat with Carcat cr crouched over you. Did- did the two of you escape? Yeah. His voice is hollow. There is crimson blood smeared in his sweater and up to his chin. You realize it must have come from the op from the reopened cuts on your arm. Parkat must have carried you out of the hive. The hive? Behind you, Karkat's home house is in flames. The heat of the fire combines with the with the heat of the sun until it feels like the two of you are standing on the edge of hell. Oh my god, did the drone do that? No, my Lucis did. I told you, I have early warning systems. He gave me a chance to get out before triggering it. Is he... is he okay? Karkat gives you a look of utter disgust. He gestures toward the burning hive. I very much fucking doubt it! Okay, 
Okay. But the drone is dead, right? So he's safe. Carcat releases a creaky a creaky wheezing sound that it takes that it takes you a second to realize it's a laugh. <laughs> God. You really are an alien. Where are you even from? It sounds so relaxing. That isn't the only drone, you freak of nature! It's seen my sign! It's heard my voice! I'm on record as cool on sight! There is absolutely nowhere for me to go! Oh no. Shit. Okay. Well, what about his friends? You really don't think Karkat is in any sort of state to make decisions, so you make an, execu an executive one for both of you. Also, it's hot as shit out here, and your delicate skin is already starting to burn. What have that friend's name been? Or what have that friend's name been? Solix? You take Karkat's hand because the two of you are beyond hold are beyond holding each other under the arc at this point. You appear in a residential street in a city, and for a second you think you must have in time as well, since it's night again suddenly. But then you look up and see the strange purple blue purple blue glimmer in the sky. It's still day, but there's some sort of atmospheric shield between be, between the killer sun and the city. You wonder why there isn't one over where Karkat lives. Maybe it's too far on the six. Karkat yanks his hand out of yours. He's still holding the blanket he'd wrapped the two of you in, staring around near nervous little tick er, in nervous little ticks. He looks even more scared than he had back in his bedroom. Clearly, he doesn't get out much. Fuck. A low chime rings out through the empty street. Karkat pulls his palm husk out of his pocket. It looks at it like he can't remember what it is. Like everything normal has been wiped away and all that remains is a frozen horror in his eyes. KK, what the fuck? I just saw your name come up on the feeds. What did you fucking- What did you do, you fucking idiot? You're going to be a prosecutioner. You can't just start showing up on cold lists. I didn't do anything. Solix, there's some stuff you about me you don't know. KK, what the hell? Okay, well, first of all, I'm right outside your hive stem. What? What are you talking about? Is this the mutant stuff? Who, is this the mutant stuff? Who gives a shit about that? TZ knows too. She said she says she can taste our blood colors through the screen, which is all kinds of freaky. How, how does that even work? The screens aren't scratch and sniff. How the fuck? It, it doesn't matter. Wow. I actually do not give a crap about any of Terezi's cackling bullshit right now. Everything is fucked forever. As if in agreement, a familiar cracking word starts up somewhere close by. You and Karka look at each other in almost comedic distress. That sprite I, makes me very sad. I, I have to go. Just come up here, okay? We'll figure this out. We'll figure this shit out. No, absolutely fucking not! Oh my god! You utter imbecile! You think your little pan sparks can do anything against a calling drone? I know you have a death wish, but I'm not going to assist you in a hysterical shit fit suicide! You don't know anything about me or my death wish, KK. Come upstairs. No! Don't make me tell you how much I hate you. Karka throws his palm husk at the pavement, shattering the screen. Tears drip off his jaw in blurry streaks of red. Get me out of here! And don't you dare ask me what's wrong! You don't. You get him out of there. To... all over. Locale to locale. We're getting some memories here. You take a grand tour of Alternia, a place you shouldn't know the name of, but you do. And everywhere you go... Oh, let's stay there. No. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that telltale grating whir. Karka was right. Wherever he goes, the drones follow. After a certain point, it just becomes routine. You teleport to a random location and two of you just sort of loaf around until you hear the sound of the, in the distance. By the time the sun starts to set, you are both exhausted and must have zapped all over the planet. You find yourself back on the grassy fields, most likely somewhere near Karka's demolished hive. Smoke hangs fetid, uh, fetid in the evening air. Karkat's eyes are dull, his hair a tangled mess of curls so thick they look like, like twisted wire. I figured out why the fucking thing didn't work. What thing? He shakes the blanket, which he's been holding onto all day, the last remnant of what is most likely by now just a smoking wreck. With two mutants in there, we were too warm. 
years of perfecting my hide like an oink beast from the slaughter technique, and it's all decimated by some clueless asshole in a hoodie! Just Karkat out here having a normal one, getting fucked up the way shit by the inexorable march of fate in the universe! I meet someone with the same disgusting deformity as me, and they immediately ruin my life! This is why I don't let people into my hive! Oh. Oh, this is- this hurts. Carcat. There's so much hatred wrapped up in his voice, in his words, and you don't think it's hatred for you. You ask him what you can do. You want to fix this. I think you've done enough. Karkat bundles himself up in the blanket, even though it isn't He turns away. Oh! It's oh, so that cool. hurt! Like that shit- ne- that shit hurt it, bro! Yeah. I feel like in the comic, we- like, we knew, but we never really got to see firsthand yeah. how awful Karkat's life must have been. <laughs> yeah, it's- so it's never was... really, like- like, like, it's- it's clear- it's very clearly implied, but we never really- it. Yeah. yeah, not like that. That was oh, that hurt. That that there's shit also, hurt, bro. There is also some uh, some uh, allegories for ice in that as well, which mm-hmm. is very intentional. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, my poor boy. Anyway, let's 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 go back to the good happy ending. ending. Let's 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 make things happy. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be happy now. <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck out of there then. All right, flee. So you're a pretty, pretty tolerant kind of dude. You're generally down for whatever, but lying in a shallow grave while a troll boy digs his dubby little horns into your ribs and a mechanical monster stomps around upstairs? That's kind of a lot, even for you. So you do really the only thing a responsible friend can. You get your friend the fuck out of Dodge. And get him a new Chevy Subur- oh. <laughs> Suburban. Holy shit! Okay. okay. <laughs> and we're in Houston now. Wow. Um, I'm gonna be Dave, so one of y'all's gotta be John. Uh, I'll I'll be John just because. Yeah. And yes, I am voicing Dave in Car Cat. That is correct. <laughs> that is that is absolutely fair. You make a good Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool of Jade to have us all over. It felt like a birthday present, kind of. Especially since all of my other presents got lost in the mail. Actually, the only one that didn't get lost was a little monster's monster, my p- monster, <laughs> <laughs> a little monster's poster my dad got me. He gave it to me a week early. poser. <laughs> did you say that? Oh yeah. Yeah. He gave oh it yeah, a little monster poser. <laughs> Almost like he knew that something weird was going to happen to the rest of my gifts. Sure. Yeah, I'm happy for you, dude. Cool that your dad got you an unbelievably crappy shit. Got your unbelievably crappy shit to you before you got thrown in the literal garbage where, frankly, it belongs. But why are you wasting any part of our valuable word count babbling about your fucking little monsters poser? Who actually cares? I don't know. I just figured some people might want to know about it. Whack. Oh, hey. Dave and John are propped up on the futon, gaming the way only bros can game. I eat with several bags of chips and mostly... Wait a minute. I have a question, but in, in a sec. Sure. <laughs> I eat with several bags of chips and a mostly empty two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew on the couch between it. Well, how is John in Dave's house? Don't worry about it. Okay. All right, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog, saving rooms for Jesus and snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Mailman. You wave hello and try to catch your breath. You're a little unbalanced from the brutal shift between being buried alive to chill Texas day with just a couple guys being dudes. <laughs> Wait, how did they even get back from Jade's? <laughs> oh, oh, there, right, there's yeah. My question. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, it turns out her dog can teleport. Wild, right? Who knew? I don't think that can right. time travel, though. Right, I keep forgetting <laughs> about that. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry, you aren't going to be out of a job or anything. And I'm probably going to ask you to zap me back to my place before my dad realizes I've been gone this long. I don't think he'd call the cops on you, but I just want to be on the safe side. Uh, by the way, who the fuck is that? This will be interesting. Oh wait, did you read the rest of that? Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, who the fuck is that? And is he like, okay? Oh, yeah. Carcat. 
He's currently curled up on the ground with the blanket still wrapped around him. He's breathing very heavily and sort of clutching at the carpet. You lean down to make sure he's cool while telling Dave and John that he's an alien planet. You figured you'd bring him here since shit got a little too hot back in Alien Land. Oh. Uh, dope, I guess. Hey, dude. Wait. He's an alien? Like, a real alien? Yeah, John, Jesus Christ, look, he's got little horns. Yeah, I can <laughs> see that, but... Not an alien? Why is my canon voice for Dave, my canon voice for Dave, just fucking Vinny Vine sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's extremely fitting. <laughs> oh, so this is where you draw the line. Our our friend living alone on this island has nothing but her magic dog and taxidermy grandpa, who she stuffed herself. Isn't where you draw it. A fake teleporting mailman in a hoodie. We're just, okay, I'm stopping that. <laughs> <laughs> A fake, a fake, a, a teleporting fake mailman in a hoodie who just wants to be bros isn't where you draw it. I guess you have a point. All of that stuff just feels so normal now. So I guess, in theory, you could bring us to visit this alien planet? Maybe? Not that that's anything I'd actually want to do. The place probably stinks as fuck. You never <laughs> catch me in space. Space ain't the place. Oh, damn, write that down. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You love a good Strider freestyle any, any day of the week, but this isn't Dave's route, so you return your focus back to... Oh, holy fuck, where did he go? Uh, yeah, the little dude just scurried out the door. Probably should have mentioned that. God damn it, you just brought Karkad back to Earth and you already lost him! Some friend you are! You zap down to the ground floor of the apartment building. Nothing. You zap to the stairwell and look up. Nothing. No little alien boy with a blanket. Shit. Damn it. Remembering the time you met Dave, you zap up to the roof. You find Carcat standing silhouetted against the, tur the turgid Texas sky, shivers of heat haze making him look strangely artificial. He's shading, he's shading his eyes and staring up at the sun. Hey, dude, don't do that! You're going to hurt yourself! Fuck, that is bright! Oh, wow! <laughs> Thank you so much for the advice! I'm way too stupid to know not to look directly into a burning ball of fire! Come on, man. Green sun. <laughs> <laughs> the pain is intense and searing, but I'm just a dumb fucking animal. By the way, this sun is pathetic. <laughs> that, that was, a, that was a, a very good part of the comic when, <laughs> when they're yeah. staring directly at the green sun. <laughs> Fuck! That is bright! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> anyway, well, thanks. this is another planet and another sun. Yes! Thank you! He drops his hand and turns back to you. There are still cobwebs in his hair from the crawl space. Is this where you're from? You think so? Maybe? You don't remember very much about yourself, but you seem to know much more about Earth than you do about- You don't remember very much about that place at all. Oh, except that it's called Eternia, apparently. This all feels... I don't know... Wrong? Or just... Really fucking weird? You zapped in and dragged me out of my hive to an alien planet where the sun isn't hot enough to burn. Well, it is definitely hot enough to burn. It just takes a little longer. Shut up, I wasn't finished. You showed me- you, before you showed up, Socks was telling me about this game that one of his friends found. We were all supposed to play it together and, I don't know, some stuff would have happened? I don't know why it feels like that matters. I just feel... <laughs> It's hard to describe. Flattened out? Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I love how different the voices are. It's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You and Carcat both jump. <laughs> Dave has ninjaed up, up the stairs and leaned casually against a brick wall. Shit, how long has he been standing there? And where's John? Oh, he uh, just disappeared. Wait, what? Yeah, it's weird. This swirling void wormhole just opened up in the TV and sucked him right in, Persona 4 style. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with you. John's in the bathroom, but uh, I had to for a second, didn't I? Absolutely sounds like something that could happen these past couple days. It does. Yeah, I, just, I accepted it. I was, yeah, 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 I just, well, I just tried to accept it. Persona 4 is just happening now. Oh yeah, hilarious. He sure got you. 
Also, you're pretty sure that scene moved up here. Uh, you're pretty sure the scene moved up here so you could talk to Karkat without Dave coming in and making all this all this about him again. Dave adjusts his shades. Man, that is just an extremely weird thing to say. But yeah, horny dude. I mean, uh, guy <laughs> with horns. <laughs> Are you talking to me? We were all supposed to play a game too, together as a group or some shit. Right. Jay told you about a game. A game that was supposed to change everything. It's that sort of shit that makes me get this feeling, you know, more about what's going on here than you're telling us. You don't. You swear you don't. You have no idea why any of this is happening. It'd be not happening? There's just some stuff you seem to know, but not until you absolutely have to. You're just sure that it's very important that you brought Carcat here. Why? How the fuck do I have anything to do with these hornless freaks? Standing right here, bro. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty good point now that I think about it. He said it's important for you to bring him here, like, here specifically, to my apartment. Yeah. Why? You aren't sure. You just have this intense feeling that it's, imper it, that it's imperative the two of them are friends. Alright. Weird, really but alright. Hey, uh, great dude. You ever play any Tony Hawk? <laughs> oh. And the picture good. on the TV, by the way, is uh, Tony Hawk beefing a kickflip to Indy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good. So, there we go. We're friends with Carcat now. We did it. Carcat's on Earth now. Yep. Yep. I mean, He's just on Earth now. He <laughs> just continues to destroy canon completely. And now Dave is sharing a couch with his two boyfriends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's it for that, Rob. <laughs> yeah. And oh next boy, up is Kanaya Kanaya. Time. And I believe the only characters that show up in this one are MSPA Reader, Kanaya, and there's a little bit of Riska. Oh, oh God. That's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, then. Let's... I'm just going to sit back. Actually, hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to sit back and uh, eat food while I listen to you guys. Enjoy yourselves. Fair enough. <laughs> Have fun listening yeah. to us be fit in voice acting. <laughs> Thank you for blessing <laughs> us with your wonderful voice. That came out weird. <laughs> <laughs> as, as I said it, I tried to think of a way to make it less creepy, but I couldn't. You're digging yourself to, for, even further there, pal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I noticed. Actually, I kind of want to see how far this can go. How, 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 how deep can this trench be dug? I'm just going <laughs> to stop talking. Alright. <laughs> well, you're... <laughs> I'm sorry I'm an asshole. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why we love you. No, it's not. <laughs> Alright, let's start this route then. Volume 5 route to... Of course. I, just... <laughs> I didn't realize Volume 5's got two separate routes, because of course it does. Oh, yeah, it does. I didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> nice reference, bro. Uh, let's go, then. Ooh. Wait, is it the same music? You're... Can I go on the same one? No, it's yes. Wait, if, you're on, if you're on volume 5 route 2, it does have the same music to start. Okay. I was confused. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, they both confused. ended Dave's place. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good point. You're learning more about yourself every day. For example, while you already knew that friendship was everything, you are now realizing that staying with your friends is not a priority. At least, that must be right because you keep leaving friends and starting over again. Why are you doing this? Probably a deeply held value of some kind. That makes sense. <laughs> anyway, you're ready to meet more friends, and the only place you've seen new people recently has been on Jade's dream planet. You zap on over there. This time, something is different. It seems to be a different part of day than before, and the overhead clouds that previously surfaced fluffy ambient backdrop are now alive with images. Meteors striking a dark world, a planet covered in sugar mountains dotted with goofy giant teapots, a young grey-skinned alien girl running around catching frogs. These must be the clouds Jade was referencing, the ones she said could never be wrong. Well, you can take guidance from them too. You've trusted more dubious things than clouds. You zone in on that frog girl with the short haircut and the red skirt. Time for the zappy thing. 
It's always night on Fallbrook, at least when folks are out and about, but it's not usually this dark. You confidently head out to start exploring your surroundings and immediately run into a wall face first. You better not be in Gamzee's closet again. God. <laughs> okay, okay. You're getting your bearings now. You've ended up in some kind of closet. You refrain from making a hackneyed joke about it. You probably <laughs> don't even have that cultural metaphor. And the noise you made elicited an answering yelp of surprise in the room outside. You hear footsteps approaching you. Then someone yanks the door open. Oh, hello. She's so pretty! Why is this suit made on a vertical phone? <laughs> hello? What the fuck? <laughs> Opening the door has allowed a beam of bright sunlight to fall across your face. You feel instinctively that the light is something to avoid. You hold your hands up to shield your face, and then remember that your hands are also made of skin and whimper. <laughs> Good observation. <laughs> the heat is doing its best to fry you, like a vampire in a movie. You are sure that idle thought will not end up having any relevance to this troll girl's story whatsoever. <laughs> of course. What are you? I like how messy your hair is. Did you just wander in here, or like... What? There's something like that, you tell her, cringing away from the light. You get the feeling this girl is not gonna fall for the old male man company. Male troll? You tell her you know one of her other friends. Who? Wait. Is it Carcat? Yes. I knew it. He makes friends with all kinds... Well... I obviously can't keep... Er, I, I read that all wrong, but anyway. Yeah. He makes friends with all kinds. Well, I obviously can't kick you out right now. You don't seem to be able to handle the sun. So I guess you better stick around until at least nighttime. You could easily zap to nighttime, but this is giving you an in, so instead you agree. No problem, you can just hang out in this closet. It's fine. It's a lovely closet. I know we just met, but you're being kind of weird. You hope it's the kind of weird that eventually becomes charming. You don't say that, though. Just think it. You know the barrier between your words and thoughts is ambiguous at best, but for real. Anyway, you have no obligation to skulk around in my wardrobe-ifying assets chamber. I have a solution. Pulling the shades, maybe? No. Why would I deprive my plants of life giving sun of life giving sunlight for a fragile skinned creature I've never met before? It is another solution. Oh, so <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I just zoned out. <laughs> a minute later you are dressed in a floor length gown of emerald velvet with long sleeves, a high neckline, and a dramatic hood to pull over your head. The dress does nothing for the heat, but it effectively shields you from the sunlight. There you go. All swaddled up like a baby, you Jane. The troll just gives you a level look. Clearly you've stumbled on a cultural misalignment. What's a baby? <laughs> <laughs> even though she's the one who hasn't even heard of a baby, she stares at you until you start to feel embarrassed for knowing things that she doesn't know. She's very good at staring confidence. What an amazing potential friend. Now out of the closet, you now know that joke won't land you. <laughs> you look around ah! the room. <laughs> it is indeed covered with plants, as well as colourful bots of fabric and half-finished sewing projects. I just noticed the uh, dress with whiskers there, which makes sense given the time scale. Oh, yep, yep, I see it. Unlike Rose's knitting yesterday, it does not give the impression of someone who has difficulty finishing things. This troll's room gives the impression of someone who enjoys, even excels at having multiple items in hot places. Or at least she thinks she does. She seems to have just been on her computer thing when you zapped in, because her chat client is flushed insistently. You try to peer at the open window, but she hits the button and makes the projection disappear, her delicate green flush rising to her cheeks. I think at this point she has a crush on Vriska. Yeah, yeah, she did. That's so, correct! So, oh. Oh, so that's gonna that's gonna make things interesting. That <laughs> no need to look at that. Guiltily, you remember spying on Rose when she called you out. You thought for a second that your chances of being her friend had run out, like if there was a universe where you became her friend and one where you didn't. 
and you'd stumbled clumsily into the wrong one. The bad one, if you will. <laughs> but luckily, everything turned out fine. Maybe you could get away with it again. Plus, this troll doesn't even know about your powers yet. Not like Rose did. She would have no reason to suspect you. Oh. Oh, hmm. So which one's the bad end? I mean... Oh, uh... Oh yeah, you may have uh, in tell case, I believe, I believe that spy on the troll's communications is a bad end, but let me check to make sure. I was thinking about it. Like, it worked uh, out once, but I think... Oh, actually, in general... for, so in this instance, it's actually do not spy on her is the bad end. Oh. I guess spying on people's communications is just always the way to make friends. That's correct. So do not spy on your <laughs> communications. <laughs> All right. No, even if you don't get caught, it's just not a good way to begin a friendship. Much fairer to start on even footing. Besides, you already have an in. You ask the troll how she knows Karka. She looks bored by this conversation starter. Sorry, but I was actually kind of busy when you came in. I'm not going to co-sign to consign you to fiery death outside the light, but I would I would appreciate some personal time. Sure, you say. Of course. The troll gives you a suspicious look and tell you to turn away enough that she can be assured of privacy. She goes right back to chatting with her friends. After a while, she gets up and starts working on a dress she's sewing. She keeps getting frustrated, ripping it out and redoing it to get it perfect. She's not being rude to you, but she's ignoring you. You attempt to engage a few more times, and she keeps answering politely. But she just refuses to be pulled into shenanigans from which a lasting friendship could form. After several hours, the sun slips below the horizon and leaves the world in twilight. The troll girl yawns. Well, it should be safe for you to leave now. Goodbye. She <laughs> nicely but firmly directs you out the door. Oh. Well, <laughs> shoo! <laughs> Yeah, that fucking face that's, is so good. That's a, that's a very good face! <laughs> uh, some of the more low-key bad endings, at least. <laughs> Polite goodbye. Yeah. At least it wasn't violent this time. <laughs> I like a new Kanaya voice, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so now... Course, Let's we'll spy. Do, yeah, do what we should have done. Spy on a friend's communications. You excuse mm -hmm. yourself to the... You don't know what they call it here. The necessities? You, roll your, you wave your hand in a vaguely embarrassed way and the troll gets it. Out of her sight, you zap back from a few minutes ago. Just outside the door to the room you're in now. You wait until you hear the thump of yourself arriving in the closet and the troll abandoning her desk. Then you quickly zap into the room and read her current chat. It just cannot escape my notice that the last three times you attacked me, it was to ask if I finished your dress yet. Under these circumstances, I find it to be- I find it trying to believe that you want it for no particular reason. I wish you would just tell me why it's so important. Who wants to risk that? <laughs> Alright, I got it. Let me, uh... All right. <laughs> Sorry, which which line are we at right now? I was totally checked out. I apologize. This is first line. Yeah, this is our first appearance. Let's see. So let's just. Of course you do. Fussy Fangs always has a reason for everything. Maybe I just want a present from my Moy Rail. Did you think of that? Or are you being too busy fussing around in your fuss block? Maybe I'm being nice. Or did you not think I can be nice sometime? I know you can be, when you want, sort of. Are we more rails again now, then? Yesterday you said the finding our friendship was something only lame dorks would do. Yes, and my more rail is a super lame dork. That's you, fake face. It's just that I can't help but notice that I'm your rail again right now, when you want something from me. You notice a lot, don't you? Always noticing something. I bet you'd be shocked to know how much you don't see. You don't even know half of what I have going on. If I've ever pretended to know what is going on with you, please allow me to apologize for such a gross misrepresentation mis of my reality. Whatever. Just, can you tell me if you finished it yet? 
Hello? Kanaya? The log ends there. We zap back before past you is done changing into the dress and re-enter the room. The troll, Kanaya, is back at her lunchbox computer, typing furiously. You have to handle this situation delicately. She can't know you were spying on her. Since you've already said that you know Karkat, you hedge your bets on all of them sharing the same friend group. You ask her carefully if she happens to know your other friend as well. The Rackman's grip? The little green flush darkens Kanaya's cheeks again. She bites her lip, showing one kind of adorable fact. Yes. I know her. Why? You are sure that helping Kanaya figure out her situation with this girl is the key to earning her friendship? Big, juicy, interpersonal conflict to solve has been dangled in front of you, and nothing makes friends more reliable. But then again, you don't really know anything about this other troll. You don't even know her name, just her handle. Can you really be of use to Kanaya, especially when your knowledge of the girl is based on a foundation of lies? Is this the right way to go? Mmm. Alright, which yeah. one's the bad end? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is offer to help her with AG. Oh boy. <laughs> This could go bad. Alright, <laughs> let's try let's try to be her therapist then. <laughs> yep. You gesture wildly. You and this girl, whose name you do totally know, go way back. In fact, if Kanaya wants some help figuring things out with her, you could definitely help. You're an observant person, this part is true. And you want to help her, this too. Kanaya thinks this over, looking skeptical. What could you do to help? She's just impossible. Everyone knows that already. I am not breaking new ground about Friska here. Friska? That must be her name. Despite Kanaya's outward frustration, you keep sensing some kind of guilty affection here. You don't know what you don't know what a moire is. How could you? You've never heard that word before. But it conjures a feeling inside you. A vague sense of warmth and comfort, but for some reason a dark room and the smell of popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. Yeah. Anyway, it's clearly some kind of intimate relationship, and Kanai's feelings are all wrapped up in it. You know what to do in that kind of situation. She needs to tell Viska how she feels. You expect Kanai to brush this up. She hasn't exactly been this emotional openness so far. And she looks like she's about to, but then she wavers. To your surprise, she lets out a heavy sigh, her shoulders slumping. What would be the point? She's not even into the relationship we have now. There is no way she'd want to take in the more... Crimson direction. Clearly these feelings have worn her down so much, her spiky defenses are weakened. You don't want to cheer on someone's vulnerabilities, but, well, it's hard to forge a friendship without them. You ask if she's sure about that. Well... No. I can't ever tell if she's sincere. She makes serious things into jokes and jokes into big dramas. I thought she'd start- I thought she started calling me her Moirel as a joke. But she told everyone else about it too. She didn't even ask me what I wanted. And now I don't know how to talk to her about it. Every conversation we have gets so antagonistic, but I'm not interested in that quadrant with her. Sometimes it feels like our relationship is a of shallow and insincere hostilities. Despite the unfamiliar alien words, this teen romantic flailing is common among all species. You nod sympathetically. But, you point out, Kanaya isn't happy now, so what would she have to lose if she pressed the issue? Kanaya gives you that even, scathing gaze again. And what is your personal interest in my quadrants? Carcat's friend? Oops, you pushed it too far. All your recent successes have made you cocky. Revert to barefaced honesty and tell her you want to get to know her better. I have plenty of friends already, and I don't even like some of them. But I will think about your unsolicited and unwelcome advice. Advice from a stranger whose presence you are to tolerating solely to not be responsible for the death of an innocent is well known to be the best kind of advice. Okay, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> God, I have to take a breath now. That's about the best you can ask for. You shut up and sit quietly while Kanaya goes back to her activities, sewing and tending to her plants with a big chainsaw she seems to have pulled out of nowhere. Finally, she huffs aside and throws the chainsaw down on the floor. It 
disappears again. And a little gold tube rolls away from where it landed. Can I, I love her weapons so much, <laughs> just saying. Kanaya stalks back to her magic computer lunchbox. She is emanating such a determined air that you don't dare to address her. Maybe she's forgotten about you. If so, it's to your advantage, because Kanaya's setup projects her windows in a very visible way, but she didn't tell you not to look this time. Oh, we got, oh. we got, we got Razor coming up again? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm falling this time. You know how you basically refuse to be straightforward with me? You know how you, oh, you know how you and I use this metaphor with full consciousness of its, of its on-the-nose nature, always weep a web of intricate emotional misdirection, and basically ask, act in the most infuriating way possible. What? Slow down. What are you talking about? Why did you start calling me your more? Was it because you actually had those feelings for me? Or did it suit your purposes somehow? What if I started calling you my mate spirit? Would that make it reality? Is that how it works? You just say things and assume they will happen like you said instead of talking about it with the other person involved. That time I meant you in that time I meant you in an abstract and general sense, not specifically you. Wait, are you saying you want to be mate spritz? You know I'm one of the few of us who still likes you. You know every you know everyone wonders why I still talk to you at all. And sometimes I do too. After everything you've done, I think in this situation the evidence for strong concupiscent feelings on my part is compelling. I do not think our so-called moral allegiance is satisfying enough to account for my continued attachment to you. Any outside observer could perceive as much. Wow, I think there was a confession buried under all that insulting language. You know what, Meanie Fangs? Let's do it! Let's be mate spritz! Do not mock me! I'm not! Jeez, do you see how un- Jeez! Do you see how unfair you're being? Vriska, be more straightforward. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vriska, be more straightforward. Vriska, talk clearly about your feelings. Define our relationship. And then when I do it, this is what I get. Let's flip bread. Why not? Uh, wait. Really? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness! <laughs> Kanaya slams the lunchbox shut and turns to you. She's even more flustered than she was before, and you can't tell if she's freaked out or thrilled. Maybe even she doesn't know. I love the hard eyes! <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Listen, I have to go somewhere. You can let yourself out, right? Do not steal anything from me. Pew! You open your mouth about a suggestion about to suggest that you can teleport her where she needs to go, but she rushes past you and down the stairs. And she's gone. Dang, I've been getting really good mileage lately out of being the person to unite distant friends. Lousy goddamn stupid independent action. You get the feeling following her wouldn't go over well either. Kanaya probably needs some privacy right now. A lesser friendship aspirant might give up at this point, but your unique skills have honed in on one thing. This relationship is happening because of your advice. Surely once things settle down, Kanaya will remember this and turn to you ready to embrace you and rain down thanks and praise for your good works. You're not about to wait around here. You're not about to wait around for it here. You zap ahead a couple of days. I sense... disaster. <laughs> yeah. No Kanaya. Nothing in the room indicates that Kanaya has even been back here yet. You try a couple more days, still no Kanaya. Hmm. You zap again. I will weak out and the brown edges on some of the leaves suggest that Kanaya has been at her new her new girlfriend's house this entire time. You're about to give up when you hear a door slam downstairs. Kanaya oh storms gosh. up the winding staircase, stopping dead when she sees you. Oh great, just what I need. Someone I don't know here in a delicate emotional witness my compromised state. Whenever I am on the pr a precipice of romantic disaster, I always think of- I always think to myself, I wish a deformed stranger was in my house refusing to leave! Just to bear witness to my inelegant suffering! I don't think it went well. <laughs> okay, wow, that was harsh. 
You're beginning to think your strategy is not going to pan out. Never want to be deterred easily. You cautiously ask her if she wants to talk about it. She puts her face in her hands. You know what? You are probably the only person who thought this was a remotely good idea. And therefore probably the only one I can complain to. Everyone else saw this coming, I'm sure. As outcomes go, this was not particularly stealthy. When she looks up, she doesn't look angry anymore. Just upset. Oh no. I do not know why I thought that in becoming my maester she would somehow start acting differently than the way she already ha she always has. Relationships are hard. Relationships are hard and nobody understands. I saw this coming, by the way. <laughs> like, just, like, 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 uh, just, uh, kind of assuming that if she were to become Briska's matri- mate sprint, that Briska would start act- you know, behaving better. Yeah. It's not gonna end well. <laughs> well, no. I mean, they're a very common form of social interaction. I think most people, especially past the age when their genetic contribution is legally required, Understand? Wait, understand? Or face certain culling? Okay, never mind that. We are trying to do a thing and it clearly didn't <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so things didn't work out with Visca? You could say that. At first it was everything I wanted. She's right, you know. She can be nice sometimes. But then she just started ordering me around. Like, I had to do what she said just because I was her maid spirit. Oh boy. Like, maybe the reason she agreed in the first place was because she wanted that leverage. You know she's upset, but she isn't getting visibly emotional. Instead, as she talks, her eyes narrow and her voice grows icy with anger. She grows very still, her muscles held taut. And she kept trying to use me to get back in with our friends who sensibly dropped her already. Like Carcat and Terezi. Although I can't believe I still have any cash with them after so obviously taking leave of my senses and up to date her. Even Terezi wasn't stupid enough for that. It felt like she just wanted me to like her so she could exploit me. Maybe because she doesn't have enough other friends. So she had to get the most out of me. Her voice is trembling with anger now. Jeez, that's rough. Honestly, it sounds to you like Kanai dodged a bullet. When you first saw that Kanai had a crush on this girl, you kind of assumed that someone as composed and rational as Kanai would be drawn to someone who would compliment her well. But you've just watched her walk into a train wreck. Well, encouraged her to. It's probably good she broke up with Visca. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Oh. Well. Wow. But you're right. <laughs> <laughs> she stalks over to her husk top and throws the top open so violently it nearly breaks. She opens a window and starts typing, so hard her claws hit the keys so so hard that one of them pops off and flies to the ground. Here we go. Riddle-loo. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, Vriska, I did not I didn't just want to date you. I wanted to feel the same things I felt and treat me at like and treat or uh, I wanted you to feel the same things I felt and treat me like a maid spirit. And whatever this is, it isn't what I wanted. Excuse me, what are you saying? So when I coughed just then, did it come up? No, up? I didn't hear I'm it. not sure if my mic turned off, just checking. But Kanaya slams the screen down and turns away. Then she puts her hands over her face again and bursts into tears. Oh. I can't help but feel a little awkward. Never. Can I glares at you? You know this is your fault, right? I do not think you have shown yourself to be competent in this area and tried to fix things now. Can you please just leave me alone? Yeah, you're not gonna be able to turn this around. Leaving probably is the best thing you can do for Kanaya now. You nod sadly and zap the fuck out of there. Aww. You Aww. didn't help! <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. This is why you should not you should not ever become a matchmaker, MSPA reader. 
Yeah, yeah. MSK Redo is really just got a bad track record. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good in time. Yes, yeah. Oh, I All right, hold on. I have to. What do I load? That's. So what you back off? That was the other one, yeah. Yeah. No reason, you say? Just curious. Kanae gives you a suspicious look. Okay. Well, I'm kind of in the middle of something. You can just swallow away the you can just swallow away the time until it gets dark. Sure. You watch her for a few minutes as she finishes up her conversation, and then starts working on things around her room. And having seen what you've seen, you are determined to find some way to help her. If you can't fix her interpersonal problems, maybe you can figure out something else she'd enjoy. Filled with investigative spirit, you start to gather evidence. Snoop, you start to snoop. Spying got you this far. Spying is great. You rifle through Kanaya's bookshelf. She has a number of sewing pattern books, which you assume must have some kind of whimsically gruesome twist and twist congruent to the rest of the world building on this planet, but pretty much just looks like sewing pattern books. There is one thing on the shelf in your own language. It's not a book, but a stack of printed out pages bound together in a distinctly homemade way. It says Spur Beta Walkthrough at the top, and is covered with familiar erudite prose. <laughs> nice! You're pretty sure the events described in this document never happened in the timeline you're currently making, and maybe whatever source can I got, got this from is not bound strictly to one timeline. That's true. There are a number of books featuring shining white figures, mostly women, with prominent fangs and variously coloured blood dripping from their cruel and elegant mouths. They're all dressed in an explosion of lightly coloured fabrics. Something about their sparkles strikes you as deeply, strangely familiar. You must just be thinking of vampires. There's no reason you would know anything about whatever the rainbow blood imbibing troll equivalent is. <laughs> Most of these covers feature a swooning troll of varying genders, clearly about to have their throat torn out sexily. Oops, <laughs> 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 Maybe of the rainbow, m many of the rainbow vampires are being menaced by brave heroes, all wielding chainsaws. A loud buzz makes you look up. You can't help but notice that Kanai is tending to her topiaries with a large chainsaw of her own. Okay, okay, you're putting this all together. The bright colours around her house, the choice of weapon, the love of sunlight. Kanai's heart's desire is clearly to date a sexy vampire. Maybe that's what AG is. <laughs> <laughs> You wonder if you could make this happen for her. Maybe on this planet, it's not just a fantasy. You clear your throat, you clear your throat to get Kanai's attention, and then casually wonder aloud if Alternia has any kind of non-living creatures. Oh. You mean the undead? Yes, yes, the undead. Where might one find the undead? It is not difficult. They tromp past my hive and their hordes every day. Slavering and so on. Trying to get trying to get in sometimes. It's all coming together. That must be the fruit of Kanaya's fascination. You start to form a plan. For the next few hours you keep a keen eye trained on the window. Sure enough, within an hour a group of strange shambling creatures lurches into view. You yell and point out the window, drawing Kanai's attention, and then zap yourself out there in front of the hall. Is that a good idea? <laughs> I think we've misread the situation here. Not to mention the sun is still out! <laughs> yeah. We saw the show on, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're close up, you can see that these guys are not exactly the debonair creatures of the night from Kanaya's book covers. They're more like zombies. Big, slow, stumbling things. Half of them falling apart. Still, needs must. You're going to net one of them for Kanaya. That's not us! Sorry! <laughs> Setting him up with a zombie. <laughs> I don't know if this is better or worse than setting him up with Visca. God. You stand your, you stand your, you stand your ground as they lurch towards you, trying to select the most annoying. Suddenly, Kanaya is at your side, out of breath from running. She's wielding her chainsaw. Being an absolute badass. Yeah. God, she's so cool. Are you actually bereft of sense? You don't fight the undead! This is suicidal! You weren't trying to fight them, but there's no time to explain that, because they attack you anyway. 
great monstrous arm backhands you to the ground, and monster claws tear through your gown and into your shoulder, lifting you by it. The creature opens a mouth full of more teeth than you thought could fit inside there. Then you're falling. You hit the ground and roll, the dirt grinding into the wounds on your arm. Ooh. <laughs> the top half of the creature lands next to you, twitching slightly. Kanaya's chainsaw gleams with its black blood. She twirls and bisects another undead thing, and then a third bear hugs her from behind and lifts her, its maw opening wide. You scramble to your feet and throw yourself at Kanaya, grabbing her kicking legs and squeezing her eyes shut to concentrate. You zap. Please don't let the monster have to come. Please don't let the monster have come with you. You open your eyes. The monster did not come with you. Only its arms did. <laughs> Kane shakes herself on the joint. Oh! The disembodied and The new, new original character, Kane. <laughs> Rocket Papaya? <laughs> Blood pools on her carpet. She does something to get rid of her chainsaw, and suddenly she's holding a tube of lipstick, which she opens. She slicks a fresh coat of black onto her lips. You slowly catch your breath. You're about to offer an apology, but something makes you pause. Kanaya is staring at the pools of blood. She cautiously, she cautiously guiltily leans down and swipes a finger in the mouth. Then she brings it to her mouth and delicately licks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I used that face again. <laughs> mm -hmm. She makes a face and spits the blood out. Then she looks up at you, flushing emerald with embarrassment. Oh, you think you made a mistake. You Kanaya... think? <laughs> Kanaya doesn't want to date a vampire. She wants to be a vampire. Pretend you did not see that. You smile cautiously. It's okay, you tell her. You're embarrassed yourself by your foolish actions. Yes. Why did you do that? Also, how did you teleport? We will be coming back to that one, do not mistake me. But I can't understand why anyone would run straight into a horde of undead. You look down. Well, it's just that when she said undead, you were picturing something else. Another kind of creature that was dead, now isn't, and is a little more appealing. Understanding dog. Oh, I see. Well, that's understandable. Vampires are just so cool. They're so cool and hot, it would make sense for anyone to want to be one. I don't know what a vampire is, but I believe that you're, we are on the same page. Maybe I misjudged you. Perhaps you have greater intelligence and finer taste than I originally God. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be a vampire fucker. <laughs> Maybe you say, and you bet anyone with taste would find Kanaya's darling, unconventional aesthetic intriguing. Even someone like the tentacle therapist. Uh huh. <laughs> Kanaya freezes. <laughs> what? How did you. Did you just. I mean. Who's that? I mean, um. She clears her throat uncomfortably. <clears throat> Whoever that is, I hope you're right. And also, well... She looks embarrassed again. Thank you for saying so. You nod, wondering if you should say more. But you should keep that friend secret, just like you're going to keep Kanaya's vampire fantasies secret. Because that's what friends do. <laughs> Bonded, Bonded for life! For life. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wanted to set him up with Rose at some point. Now we got Dave and Carcat hanging out. Yes. Yep. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we're, we're 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 getting all the cannon ships going. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Hell we're yeah, getting we're getting those ships sailing. <laughs> it, it is looking like it's leading up to just a big old meetup at the end of every uh, of all yeah. this. Yeah. Really interested in where that, where it's going ultimately. Now, from what I've seen, because I, I haven't been paying attention, spoilers. But from what I've gathered, Friska and Gamzee might be next. Yeah. Friska and Gamzee are the next two. Yes. So oh shit. Be something. 
That's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Until then, uh... Alright then, we're gonna prep for that next week then. Yeah, that's everything for yep. this volume, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. That's it. Uh, that was a lot of fun. You know, Best of Quest is so good. But yeah, I just... <laughs> I never have much new to say at the end, just every time, like, I really like this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for yeah. coming with yeah. us, Paul! Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was a lot Thank of fun. Thanks for having so me. This is for, great. Yeah. It's being the only car cut voice to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Well, I, I know, but... But hey, it means I can finally watch your... Because I've been I've been looking forward I've been looking forward. Oh yeah. Sorry? You definitely yeah, gotta it, check that shit out. Yeah, I'm I've been looking forward to watching Casey stream. Yeah. So I I can finally do that now. God. So um, I'm just gonna end this stream like this. So so a couple of friends of mine got married today. Um, RJ oh. and Rachel, um, who are two people who are pretty active in the Homestuck community. And Aww. there was this guy last, a, about a month ago, who was flaming the, Rachel for some reason, um, because they were making fun of Pro Jared for being an, a, a baby bitch. And, oh, um, of course. and so RJ came in to defend her because she is his fiance. And this stranger who they didn't know, um, said, my dude, she's not going to sleep with you no matter how hard you try. <laughs> Holy today, shit. And so today... <laughs> She quote retweeted that with pictures of her wedding. Holy <laughs> shit, that's beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, I need you to send me that to see that. That's, <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to put it in the Twitch chat. How about that? Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> It's an intense power move. I fucking love it. Hold on. Oh, shit. You ever, you ever just eat shit? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's just the, the best. That's so good. Outcome. <laughs> so, oh my god. With that, thank, I think... thank you, thank you for that gem. Yes, yeah. that the stream. Thank you for that. I'm yeah. Everything else. Uh, yeah, that's the stream. See you next week. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Whoever came up, whoever yeah. came to watch. Yeah, we got some viewers this time. I remembered to post it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. See you later.